Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Alumni Chats, a weekly podcast featuring alumni from the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism here at Western Illinois University. My name is Buzz Hoon. I'm the interim dean for the College of Fine Arts and Communication. I'm also the host of the podcast for today, and I have the pleasure of welcoming uh, former student Pierce Roberson from the class of 2014. Pierce, welcome to the show. Buzz, good to be here. Good to see you. I don't think I've seen you in about eight years. It is. So it's, it's wonderful. It seems like it was yesterday because, first of all, you look exactly the same. But yeah, it, you know, got, got a little bit of a face left, a little bit of a, of a, of a teeth manufacturing since the last uh, time I saw you. But uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's we're so, all good. Yeah, it just, uh, it, you know, you go from seeing somebody every day, which I think I saw you every day. Pretty much. Uh, to all of a sudden not seeing you for eight years. And it seems like where, where's Pierce been? When, when you live on the third floor of Saley Hall, pretty much <laughs> <laughs> doing everything that I was trying to do uh, during my time. Yeah, you end up seeing each other. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good to chat. Um, you know, had a lot of fond moments at Western and it's, it's, good to, it's good to replay them. So let's give everybody a life update. Tell everybody where you are, what's going on <clears throat> in, in Pierce's life. Yeah, uh, I am in the city, the city of brotherly love. Nice. Uh, I'm out here in Philadelphia. I'm producing for Fox 29 uh, WTXF call letters. If you, uh, if you, if that's your thing, um, been out here since October. Made the made the jump over from Las Vegas. Um, it's been a great ride. It's been a wonderful ride. But Philly is very fun, um, as you might guess. The sports fans are uh, interesting. I think that's a <laughs> last week was the Ben Simmons thing and everybody they bought four thousand dollar tickets to sit for like the worst seat in Wells Fargo. All to boo Ben Simmons, who's on the bench, and then and they get it lit, they get lit up and they can't talk. It's the pettiness in me loves it, but this is such a great sports town. I, you know, being a sports fan, you know, we got to work together a lot, um, you know, in the sports department. So, you know, that's a huge thing for me. Um, you know, it's just been love out here. Um wonderful city out here on the east coast i can dip to new york if i want to dip to dc um so everything's been good in my life everything's been wonderful good and one of the things we're going to talk about today is not only are you producing for the uh for the station but you're also still operating uh the barber's chair which mm-hmm. is uh, a sports network mm-hmm. and, and so um you were a co-founder and also an editor for that right yeah yeah so um we founded it uh, beginning of 2018, um, this was something that, you know, during my first job in, in, in Peoria, um, and, you know, we, 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 we want to get this out of the way. And I'm very glad that, you know, I had people like you and, and, and Jasmine Crichton and, and others and faculty at WIU to, 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 to lower the expectations very early in terms of like your first job and, and the output, because, you know, you might think that, you know, you can go in and call your shots and make what you want. No, you're going to be you know, it's gonna be a lot of nights of egg and ramen. Let's just say that. And, you know, there was a point where I was just like, man, I got to do something. I, I, uh, whether or not it's just, you know, in news and like, thankfully I'm in a position right now that, you know, I'm comfortable, but at the time, you know, I needed something that, you know, I could have a passion for that was mine. Mm. Cause you know, you can, you know, I, I remember when we stepped on for orientation, and remember, we did the, the videos, you know, what do you want to be? You know, what's your end goal? And I think that's right. Most of us all said ESPN anchor or E or E entertainment anchor. And then, you know, you, you get on the campus and you see all these, you know, other people, other kids that, that want to do the same thing. And then you go off on the conventions like we do and you see kids that want to do the same thing. And then all of a sudden it's not unique. And, it, it, and, and, and you're one of a thousand. I don't want to be one of a thousand. I want to be one of one. So, you know, we started the barber share. We looked around Chicago sports media and we we're just like, yo, this is very, you know, this doesn't cater to us. You know, we're, we're, we're three black kids from the city of Chicago and we don't think that this caters to us and in, 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 in sports fans that look like us. So so let's go out there and let's make that. And in four years, we've we pretty much covered the Bears all the last two seasons, which like, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say much about Bears because I'm very upset about them right now. Yes, um, but, you know, that's 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 major. That's major to me. You know, we've 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 been out there in crypto dot com center in L.A. for the Clippers. Um, you know, sky's the limit. 
you know, for, for what we're trying to do. And, 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 you know, it's, it's just amazing. It really is when you, when you believe in something that you created. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm so glad that it's a creative outlet for you because Mm -hmm. like you, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those, you know, sports nuts that uh, needs to have like-minded people to talk about things that are on our minds. You know, we, we get wrapped up into our sports and want to uh, commiserate or, or, or fantasize or whatever it is to think about when the bears will be good again, or what's going on with bulls. Will the bulls, you know, Mm -hmm. be able to, you know, cause any havoc in the, in the, in the playoffs, those kind of things. It's all, you know, and and there's a need for that. Right. Right. And, And even having, you know, tougher conversations, like I, you know, one of my best friends, Shakia Taylor, she's a mover and shake. She's actually the only woman writing about baseball, only black woman writing about baseball right now. You might think Claire Smith. Claire Smith's a legend. Claire Smith was let go by ESPN a little while ago. Shakia is the only one. And she shakes the table in ways that need to be, whether it's to shine light on on the Negro Leagues or, you know, just to, 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 to call it into action, you know, giving black women opportunities in sports like that's. That's also like what I'm trying to do with the barber's chair, because, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of people in marginalized groups, black people, women, uh, 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 gay and trans people who aren't given opportunities or they're or, you know, uh, stuff like women's sports. Remember, we did we did uh, uh, women's basketball at the barber's chair. And I took so much pride in that because this was a sport that doesn't get the media coverage that men's basketball does or men's foot or football or baseball. You know, so it's about shining a light towards them and, you know, giving them more of a platform because, you know, you can turn on ESPN and you can see the the whole hum, you know, what's deeper than that? Well, let's let's talk about your I want to I want to dig a little bit here. I always like to say I'm unpeeling an onion and mm. uh, you, you grew up and obviously you have these Chicago roots and mm-hmm. they have. Yeah, that that's that's an impact on somebody on and shaping their life. What was it um, within your life, your family, you know, friends, uh, high school? What was what were some of the major impacts on you and have shaped who you are? Well, I think I was fortunate enough to come from um, a two parent home in, in Chicago. And, you know, those are things that you that you take for granted. We weren't well off you know, but we felt good. We felt decent and we weren't, you know, but when you're, when you're a kid, you're just, you know, you're happy to have. And, you know, there were a lot of moments where I did not have, you know, I, I I had suffered through a debilitating house fire, um, when I was 11 and, you know, I can still, if I close my eyes, I can still, you know, smell the soot and, and feel that cold dampness of, you know, what was my childhood home. And, you know, to tell you a quick little story, just to, you know, what, what, what drove me, you know, when that house fire happened, or a month before that house fire happened, my brother was in town. He bought three tickets to the final Cubs series of that weekend. It was Cubs Pirates um, Saturday. It was me, him, and his girlfriend, now his wife. And we had those tickets. We stored them in a very, very safe place. Um, fire happens a month later. I, I walk through the house. You know, I can, you know, everything's just destroyed. It's black. It's cold. I walk towards the China tap in the cabinet. Every black person listening is going to tell you, yeah, no, that China cabinet is, it's, it's, it's special. It's very special. Walk towards the China cabinet. Inside that China cabinet, pristine as a whistle, there's three tickets to that Saturday's Cubs game. There was a rain out that Friday and they needed three, their magic number is three to clinch division. Astros lost, they swept the doubleheader. This was a, not a split doubleheader. They were just like, yo, single admission. If you have a ticket to Saturday, come to both games. So in the worst week of my life, also had one of, you know, the the, the greatest joys of my childhood. Hmm. And it was, you know, it might be a metaphor for just like how I've always treated life. You know, you're going to be down. You're never going to avoid those down moments. They just come, you know, you can't control life. It's, 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 it's your response to it. Yeah. And not everybody has that, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Life is amazingly hard. 
you know, when you when you're able to find that willpower to 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 move on and keep carrying on, you know, it's 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 a powerful thing, and that's what I've always tried to do. You know, if it's out of my control, it's nothing I could do about it. All right, cool. Let's focus on what I can control and how I can maneuver and how I can operate and what can I do to put myself in a position where I'm happy and I'm comfortable in my life, you know, and totally recognizing that not everybody can do that. That's just how I've been able to operate. So, you know, growing up as a kid, like life was hard. Life was really hard. Um, You know, you just found ways to avoid those pitfalls and avoid those down bad moments and set yourself up because, you know, the alternative would have been really bad. Really, Well, really you bad. know, I think I, from the moment you and I met over that in your entire career, I always thought this young man is so self-confident. And, and I think that is that a, was that just a natural thing or did somebody mm-hmm. give you the feeling that you were going to be supported along the way? Like somebody was always believing in you. You know, I, and that's a hard question because, you know, I absolutely have those moments where I, I don't feel confident at all. I'm very anxious. You know, I do suffer from from depression and anxiety and it does creep up in, in, in certain moments. Um, the the, the self confidence comes from just trusting and believing in how good I am at, at it, you know whatever I put my mind to. Yeah, that's that's for me really all it is. You know, if I if I understand my worth and I understand what I bring to the table, then you know it, it, you can try to humble yourself. But I don't think that's the right way to go about things. I think if you are confident in your abilities, be confident in your abilities. You don't have to suppress that. Um, you know, I, I've had countless people, you know, reassure their belief, their belief in me. And that's what's, what's kept me going. Obviously my parents, you know, my mother, God bless her soul. She always knew that, you know, her three kids were going to grow on to be something great. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I can sit here and say, even without her here that like, I, I know I'm making her proud and that's, you know, reassurance enough for me. Um, my dad never goes a minute without, you know, calling up and being a sap and letting me know how proud he is. And it's nice. like, okay, okay, dad, I get it. You, you know, you, you understand. Yeah. <laughs> you no, understand. Awesome. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I, 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 I want to, you know, my friends are just amazing people. And, you know, the fact that I have friends that will, you know, dive into my content and, and let me know what they think and, and even, you know, give me the connects that I need to, you know, continue furthering and advancing. Like the fact that they believe in me is just so wonderful. And of course, like, you know, my job now and, you know, I guess we'll talk about it, you know, more in depth soon, but, you know, news is hard. News is very, is a, is a very difficult industry to be in and it drains you. And a lot of people have been taken out, especially over the last couple of years of the pandemic and all you know to you know feel like you in the newsroom and 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 they know your worth for me that's that really does matter a lot and i and i feel that here well let's let's talk about because you went to you so you you get done with high school you come to wyu mm-hmm. and i and you you i do remember meeting you over that summer and and recording your video and and everything and and uh, but I and you know even though you're in news I thought you were a sports guy you know right from the get go is that what you you know what were your early memories and how did you get involved? Um, I, I don't think I was involved my first semester. I think my first semester I was just enjoying college. Uh-huh. You know, this was an opportunity for 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 me, you know, to I guess test that self confidence and maybe I tested it a little bit too much at certain points. Um, but I don't think it was until like I started doing sports classes, which would have been my second semester of freshman year, that you start to, you know, get into a habit of everything. And then I think my second year is when I finally, you know, started to dive in. And that's when I started doing the dog. Um, and you know, really started to find a passion for speaking into a microphone. And that's kind of where like the podcasting side of everything was laid out yeah. in, in starting on the dog and then eventually becoming program director and, 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 and leading that charge and, 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 and interning for the local station in town, you know, 
that was that was major for me because that was just a a, a, a test of you know my self confidence, my banter, my wit. You know, I've had amazing partners during my time at the barber chair. So, you know, it, it was really, really just like going, not the barber chair, sorry, the dog. And it was really just like going on to, you know, to going and sitting in a room and try, chatting with friends. And, you know, that, that, was, that was wonderful for me to do. And I want to say it was junior year that first we wound up getting you know, really deeper into sports and announcing and calling. And I was able to do do soccer, which... I had never watched soccer <laughs> up until that point. You really like trusted. <laughs> well, again, that confidence and... comes out, man. That's that's what I mean. You weren't yeah. you, you weren't afraid of that. Nah, I, I, you couldn't be. And you know, now I, I I I'm I'm popping in. You know, popping in the Champions League, popping in the Premier League. It's like, yeah, you know, I was completely turned on to to a new sport that I wound up enjoying because I was thrown into the fire to call it in college. Um, you know, being able to do softball, being able to to do sideline for basketball. Um, when we won the uh the the conference title, regular season title, you know, it was just it was so fun, and you know that was always something that like event like I, I Western does a great job of teaching you the tools, even if you don't utilize those tools at that point in time, don't be afraid because those tools can carry on. And, you know, I always knew that, like, yo, if I want to come back and I want to do something in sports, if I don't do it now, which, like, there was cosmetic reasons, where I was just like, okay, I'm not confident in doing it now. I know years down the line, we can find a way to get it done. I, I don't even remember how I started producing or doing news, but... You I'm know, sure Jasmine I'll, Crichton somehow she can tell you she she stole she she always had a habit of, of finding our sports people and and taking them and turning them over to news in some way. It was Jasmine's. Yeah, news. I mean, it's, it's definitely Jasmine's fault. I'll go ahead and blame Jasmine <laughs> for me being here. Appreciate you. Thank you for believing that I'm a really good writer, because if it wasn't for that, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't have you know, that, that, that confidence in the newsroom wouldn't have been there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, it's amazing what, what someone's belief can do for you. Um, and, 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 you know, through that, just learning that, like, you know, I, I, I always knew I'm a good writer. I would just sit up, you know, not doing homework in fourth grade and just writing about whatever, like, mm -hmm. Oh, Francisco Rodriguez had, four strikeouts and eight and two innings and like who cares but I didn't feel like doing homework I just felt like jotting down whatever was on my mind and you know knowing that helped tremendously when you know we started doing uh, uh WIU3 and then we wound up creating uh, uh the morning show a year later and you know you get to see your creative juices flowing like that was what I was really attracted to is knowing that like, you know, I could be in charge of a show. There's especially in, at, at that point in time, it's not much that you can do. It's mainly local. You know, you're mainly pulling stuff from, from a CNN news source, but I guess that, that limited, you know, what we had, you find a way to create with it. And it was that aspect that really, really got my juices flowing. Um, so, I, you know, with Western, it, it just really tapped into that, to my creative side, you know, whether I was doing sports or whether I was doing the dog or whether I was doing news, it was, you know, how can I, you know, stick my two feet in this and make this great? Yeah. And, you know, as you said, there were a number of really, I, I, that during that time, some really talented students that you were hanging out with as well. What, can you recall from me who you enjoyed working with and that you felt like uh, helped you grow along the way? There were a lot of guys and girls in radio um, my sophomore year um, that you know, I got to spend like every lunch period there, even maybe when I had a class sometime. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, spencer prelates was great he was really the program director of the dog yeah uh, my sophomore year when i was there he was amazing danica simmons was great um you know there's such a lot of a lot of amazing people and even even the news you know i i i, I was like lockstep with chris love and good um 
we were kind of like yin yang when it came to news but then also mm-hmm. like the nerd stuff um so i'm i'm very proud of him and what he's he's been able to do um you know nico uh, i feel like i remember the first class i took with nico you know like it's amazing to see you know or it's, it's it, one of my favorite things is you know when i'm producing a show and there's content that i see whether it's on cnn i'm, I'm a fox now so you know we, uh, it's not like there's a many uh of us out in in in, in the, the rupert murdoch world but you know when i'm when i'm doing a show and i see a chris loving good package or i see a nico hefflinger package and i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna run that <laughs> no reason no rhyme or reason the story might be really good but it's just you know to 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 to, to fit my boys in there and to fit fit wiu in there you know you wind up carrying it with you wherever you go so i had a, a, a lot of good a lot of good people to lean on uh back in my day at western and i'm glad they're all doing good yeah and and uh, we already talked about jasmine but i'm i'm sure roger um hitchcock roger yeah oh my god roger was <laughs> there's still like little law things that'll pop up in my head <laughs> i'm just like darn it roger <laughs> <laughs> people often say that law class even though they it was not their favorite class was one that stuck it's with them really for years. yes 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 it's 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 still there there's still little little things i'm like wait oh no i can't do that <laughs> we will get sued appreciate you roger you really really got the fear of god in me on that <laughs> that's good so when you when you uh you got done you did your internship at wgn or one of your internships your yeah, last yeah my last internship was at wgn and uh man it's wonderful you walk through three studios um before you get to the newsroom the first studio is the bozo uh station or studio and um i don't think it's there anymore because because they have news nation i think they might have moved it out but like when i was there you could like walk in and there's still the props from bozo circus you know yeah. if you <laughs> if you wanted to play bozo's buckets you, you definitely could um you know yeah it was it was so much fun and and being at home and, and being at like you know all the stations in Chicago are great, but it's something about WGN that just always felt like Chicago. You know, it feels like home. And, you know, to be able to, you know, sit and watch, you know, I, I did midday. I was I was a writer for midday. So you get in and the, the minute you get in, they're starting the, the, the morning news. And I just, I got to sit and watch how the best morning show in, in, in besides ours in Philadelphia, of course, uh, one of the best morning shows in in the world got to operate and it was just it was it was my boy and i got to take part of it too sometimes which was which was rad <laughs> it was so rad being able to meet tom skilling and he's such an amazing person it's yeah. you know it's it, it, it was one of it was one of those opportunities that was just it, it was so fun and you know I, I have no desire to come back come back home to chicago that's not necessarily because i don't want to work in chicago but if i ever did WGN is, is, is a home for me. And, um, they, they treated me very well in my time there. So WIU, some WIU grads here too. There are. Yeah, there are. I believe I got to work with a couple in my time there. Yeah. So I'm um, blanking. Yeah, that's all right. The, Joe Dix was, uh, he was producing, I think he's a producer in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, Tommy Boyd. And, uh, I think we have some videographers that work there. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I might have I might have ran into a videographer or two from Western, but it's been so long. I'm blanking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. So so after the internship, your first job is down in Peoria Bloomington Market, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. A producer. Yes. Doing uh doing six o'clock and ten o'clock. Um, I mean later transition into five and nine. Peoria is interesting. As I mean. Central Illinois, a lot, of, a lot of folks can can tell. Peoria is a very interesting place, um, but but again, it kind of goes back to you know what I was saying earlier is like your first job is not going to be sexy. You know, it's going to be a lot of hardships. It's, you know, you, you, you're going to be doing a lot in the newsroom to not be making a lot, um, and it's hard. And you know, sometimes you just got to have a you got to got to find it to 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 stick it stick at it. You know, you kind of have to, it's going to be a lot of days where you're looking at the end goal while you're eating your ramen and eggs. Mm-hmm. 
and 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 that was Peoria for me. So you you're working a lot of hours and you're getting low pay and and you're probably as you said you know wondering what's going on, but you're learning, you're growing, mm-hmm. you're adding all this uh, sort of e- expanding your tool belt mm-hmm. and what you have uh, are learning as you go along there. Um, how many years were you there? Uh, about a year and a half, I okay. want to say year and a half. So how did you make the transition? Because the next hop to Las Vegas. It's a huge jump. Yeah. It's a massive jump. Uh, well, I, I, I ended up taking time off after I left Peoria. Um, you know, it, it was a very hard time when I left because I had just lost my mother. Um, we had just started the barber's share and I was, I was, you know, really drained. Mm. at that moment in time. So I was I was one of those people who were like, you know, I needed to leave. I needed to step away. And I didn't know if I was ever going to come back to news. Um, had a wonderful 2018 at home. And let me tell you, if you ever feel like you just need to like leave whatever you're doing and go enjoy life, please do so. Yes. Never, never neglect how amazing life is when you enjoy it and not work yourself to the bone. Um and you know, at that point in time when I left Peoria, like I had just forgotten that. And, you know, I spent that 2018 or a good part of that 2018 just darting around the country and, you know, going and enjoy wrestling shows or sporting events and going to see friends I haven't seen in forever and 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 and, and sites I haven't seen. It was just a therapeutic thing for me. So when when I finally, you know, was able to, you know, get back in and jump back in, you know, mentally I was ready. And mentally, I felt that one, my skills in this are great. I don't have to, you know, worry about that. I just need somebody to believe in it and somebody to trust it. And you know, Vegas came calling, and I was, I, I was, I was, I was, I, it was, I, I threw in the application on a whim because it's three a.m. at the Fourth of July. I'm up watching Stranger Things, and I was like, all right, let me go ahead and apply for jobs. And I threw it in. I got the call the next mo- the next afternoon. Like I didn't expect it, got the job the next week, but it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I'm not going to question God, you know, he's moving for a reason. You know, this is a jump from, what was it like 116 to one to 39, you know, that's, that, that's insane. But, you know, in, 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 in being in Vegas and Vegas is a wonderful place. Always, always go to Vegas. If you have an opportunity to go to Vegas, go to Vegas. Um, You know, in being there, there's so much, you know, to create with because like it's, 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 it's such a vast land to, 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 to create and think and operate. And, you know, my two years in Vegas were, were two and some change. were full of a lot of creativity and they, and they, and they let me go, which was like my favorite thing. And, you know, they trusted me with an hour to make an hour great and to, you know, not only be able to, 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 to tell everything in Las Vegas Valley, but then to, you know, the fact they trusted me once everything went down, um, you know, with George Floyd and, you know, when there were protests like 24 seven, almost, it felt like, and, and, and they really trusted me when it came to, you know, live coverage. That's when I was like, okay, you know, I can really go far <laughs> with news um, to, 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 to be able to, you know, be given the reins in that regard and, and, and take control and then be, be able to tell stories how they need to be told, which Western media kind of forgets or neglects a lot of times. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, was, that, was, that was amazing for me. So, you know, it was a massive jump. But I think by the time I made that jump, like, the fact that I was mentally ready for everything I had been through, you know, the stresses of being in a newsroom. I, I, I understood what I was walking into. I was extremely happy that this was something fresh and, you know, you know, I, I had never been, I, I've been out West, but you know, this is the first time living somewhere outside of Illinois. Like that, that was, that was major for me. You know, something that, you know, really got to, you know, really sink my heart into. And you know, Vegas obviously set me up for here, but the one thing it did is it made me understand my worthiness. Yeah. It made me understand what I could bring to the table. And, you know, once I, once I realized that, once I learned that, and once I had, you know, coworkers in my corner who, who knew that, you know, 
it, it, it set me up for where I'm at now. And it's truly set me up for, for what I'm going to do in the future. That is, that, first of all, if you just end the story right there, I mean, that, that's already a great story. It's one where you say, man, I'm, I'm so happy that you found, uh, you know, the success of that. And, and not mm-hmm. just because I think that uh, for so many young people, they think uh, it's everything's going to be linear. There's going to mm-hmm. be a trajectory of you start here and you end up here, right. not realizing that you can have, you know, times where you can take that time off or there may be uh, something else that comes on and you try something else in life. And it doesn't always have to be, you know, that you mm-hmm. start at point A and you end up at point C no. because that's obvious. Buzz, I'm going to tell you, there was a poem um, my dad used to tell me. Um, back in the day, I don't know if you uh, have heard of Robert Frost, uh, The Road Not Taken or The Road Less Traveled. And, you know, I, I, I think back on that and he probably told me that poem like maybe 20, 20 years ago, maybe. But I think back on and how my life is gone and, and my career is gone. And I've definitely taken <laughs> The Road Less Traveled. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's a little bit of a, ch- of a tongue in cheek poem, but like truly, like I, I, I truly have taken The Road Less Traveled. There's a lot of things that, you know, I, I, I probably wouldn't recommend a lot of other people do just because, you know, what we'll, we'll worked work for me and how I was able to get to where from point A to point B or to point C, point D, da da da, you know, isn't what everybody else needs to do. Like I've had to make some very tough choices. I've had to, 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 to quit jobs, you know, in, in very crucial points because it was, it was harming my mental health. And, you know, the, 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 the fact that I was able to do that and come out and uh, come out of it on the other side better. It, it, that's what I want everybody to pick up is like, yo, especially news. Like this is a business that really drains you. I've seen people come into news you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed. And then five months in, you know, it, it, it drains them so much. They're leaving the business altogether and going and doing photography or PR or, or, or whatever, you know, especially during the pandemic and having gone through, you know, you're telling just all these terrible stories every, every single day, you wind up, you know, mentally just feeling tired and, you know, if you need that break, if you need to go and take that break, do it. Please don't neglect your mental health because when you do and you're able to, you know, even if, you, if you're able to come back to news and you still want to work in news or even if you do want to work in news and this thing drains you, take care of yourself. Always take care of yourself. You know, that, that stretches out to every, to every industry, but just yeah. specifically since we're talking about it, take care of yourself. It is going to be a massive help you know, to, 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 to keeping you in it and to, to, to helping you realize that, you know, when you step into that, that newsroom, you step into that studio, you are worthy. You bring a lot of worth to the table. You know, that's, that, that, that's, you know, what, what my life has gone. I've taken the role less traveled to, to, to get to where I'm at now. There's been a lot of, you know, stressful moments. It's been a lot of hard decisions. I wouldn't change it for, for a bit, you know, because I know that, you know, when we meet again for, for, for part two of this in five or 10 years, I'm going to be somewhere a lot, not hopefully not somewhere. I love Philly, but like, I'm going to be somewhere <laughs> in my life, you know, that, that, that's even greater, you know, cause I believe in that. Amen. Well said. So you, you're in Las Vegas when we left last, left last, or last left you. Yeah. Um, and then how do you make the transition to Philadelphia? Did that opportunity, did, did you just feel like it's time for me to look at the next step? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> so I didn't know my, uh, I didn't know my time was up in, in Vegas. I thought I had a little bit more time. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it was one of those things where like God was working and I, you know, I, I may have believed something different, but God was like, yeah, no, we need to, we need to, 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 to level you up and get you in a position that you need to be. And, you know, in consulting with, 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 with coworkers um, at my job. And this is, you know, again, it was a weird time because like, we're, we're still in a pandemic at this point yeah. in time, you know, you're still dealing with, with, with layoffs and, and budget cuts and, and all of that. And you have to have a, you have to make a, you know, executive decision for yourself, you know, listen, I love Vegas. I, if I, if I could have my bag now in Las Vegas, I would 
love to be in Las Vegas because it is it is an oasis, I will say. Um, but you know, I knew I, I needed to be somewhere else in order to, to 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 feel the comfortability that I do now. And you know, having those coworkers that was just like, man, like you're so talented that you can go do whatever you want. And then not only that, but then the, the you know, once I finally made that jump and finally, you know, took the job, you know, there's so, it's, there's so many times, especially in my life where like I've had fight or flight, you know, I could have went to New York for, for grad school, whether it was Columbia or CUNY and I didn't want to leave my mother. I was, I was frightened to leave Chicago. And so I didn't. And, you know, it was one of those, it was one of those moments where like, I could have stayed in Vegas. I could have, you know, taken whatever offer or I could have believed in my worth and I could have struck, uh, striven, striven for more. And, you know, for, for a lot of folks within news, you know, they haven't taken that jump or they didn't take that jump when they probably should have. And when they know they should have, and, you know, for them to just express their belief in me and, you know, just be in ama- amazement that, you know, I was able to trust that worth, like that matters so much because like, f- for you, like you're scared, you're out of, you're scared out of your mind. Like I got to move halfway across the country. Yeah. I, I, I got to start at a new station. I don't know how it works. This is a top four market. Granted, I've always believed that I should be in the top four market, but you know, until you get there, there's so much anxiety. But knowing that, you know, I had people in my corner that believed in me. It was like, okay, we can do this. Let's go. Let's go to work. That matters so much. Latch on to those people. Not only latch on to those people, uh, let the people in your life know how much they matter and in the work that they bring. It's, it's so powerful. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what drove that's what drove me to be out here in Philly and you know it's you know still amazes me I look outside the window and I see the, the Ben Franklin Bridge and you know I I've I'm I'm finally in a position where I'm comfortable but I'm not settling nice it's a great midpoint when you're comfortable but you're you're still hungry for more and so we're going to keep keep pushing keep pushing for more and 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 you know, I'm just excited for, for everything that's going to come. Tell everybody what, especially students, I'm sure that might be interested in saying, what's, what is the typical day like for you as a producer, and especially in this mm-hmm. kind of market? What, what do you do? Um, how do you interact with other people at the station? That kind of stuff. Yeah. So it, it's much different than, I got fortunate because I did small market Peoria. I did your, your, your middle of the road markets, Vegas. And now I'm here, top four market in, in, in Philly. And, you know, it operates so much differently, um, which is like a blessing for me because it's so much less that I have to worry about. You know, uh, you, know I, I, you come in, you have your morning meeting, you know, you, you do your pitches, you discuss, you, you know, there, there's, pro, uh, there, there's proactive discussions with you know, where we want to carry things, what we need to focus on. You know, when you're in a city like Philadelphia, which like, if you're in Chicago and you understand Chicago news, it's pretty similar. You know, you got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of murders, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, carjackings, it's a very violent city. Um, so, you, you know, you wind up keeping that in mind and keeping, you know, you know, breaking news in mind in that regard, breaking's much different than it is in the smaller, the smaller markets. So breaking in Peoria might've been the, uh, the water company has a new CEO here. It's, we have a child drowning on the shore, you know, like you wound up just understanding what takes precedence, Mm -hmm. what, you know, Hey, is this affecting the greater Delaware Valley? No. All right, fine. But then you also, you know, you learn to keep in the, 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 the things that people need to keep their daylight and the, you know, remind everybody that, hey, the world is, is, is I mean, it's bad, but, you know, there are some good happening in the world. So, I, 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 you know, coming in, producing my shows now, I always keep that in mind and, you know, hear things break and things change and you roll with the flow, roll with the punches. I will say, like, you know, being out in Philly, sports is major here and, and we treat it major. 
um you know live we had live shots um all last week um when uh when when the nets came in to play the sixers and 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 ben, ben simmons came back didn't even play but we were the only station that had the the up close view of him leaving the back of the four seasons on the way to the stadium. It's, it's, you know, it's, it, it is what it's sports. You know, we, we, we feed that we feel, we, we, we feed that terrible, <laughs> terrible part of you. And I understand because <laughs> I have a terrible sports fan, uh, go bears, but you know, it, 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 it's fun in that regard. And you wind up, you know, you, you, you understand like, yo, there's so much to the city that, that, that needs to change and you know we're committed to, to to going there and hoping to enact that change and you know we're also committed to going there and 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 hunting down all the sports stars that you don't like so um it's 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 a very interesting city it's a very wonderful town um you know the news is 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 is, is massive out here because i like i didn't realize like how okay philly's small when you think about what it looks big but it's small you can walk from one end of the city to the other in like 40 minutes. But like you got South Jersey. I didn't realize like South Jersey, Atlantic City was right there. Uh, you know, s- Southeastern PA is pretty vast. Like we, we cover a lot of Delaware. Like I didn't realize we covered so much, um, you know, so it, it, it's it, it you, you wind up having to play a, you know, a real close game of, OK, does this matter? Yeah, a lot but- of things if she would cover. Peoria, Las Vegas, you know, you have to, you have to make those decisions. Yeah. I was going to ask you if, you know, cause I've, I've always been interested in talking with people that work in news, how they start to develop their filter of like, is this a story? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you go through and, and probably unconsciously looking at life thinking, is that a story that my viewers might be interested in you? Everything is now filtered differently. Yeah, I feel like news folks are always trying to find a story out of something. It's just, you know, it's it's force of habit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you end up having to like really fine tune your filter and 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 really trying to get down to like, does this matter to our core demographic who we're trying to reach? Does this matter to our area? You know, and you know, it winds down, winds down like, okay. You're you're a, a, a mother of two from Berks County. Think about what a mother of two in Berks County would care about, and then you just you just cut and 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 do it that way. Obviously, it's you know some things take precedence over others. Maybe a mother in Berks County doesn't care about Philly spring training, but guess what? Baseball's back. We got to fit Philly spring training right there in that second block because it matters. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of horrifying stories that like, you know, got to fit in because it's really horrifying, but it has great video. I think we were first on the scene of the arrest. If you've been paying attention, there was a guy who stabbed two people at the MoMA yeah. in uh-huh. New York. And he came down here, started a fire at a Best Western. They found him sleeping outside the Greyhound. And we were the first people that got that video very early in the morning. Like we talk about going there, we're going there. And, you know, one of the, you know, I, I, uh, uh, Sam, Sam Edsel, um, who like I, I should have brought up earlier, but, you know, another person who was just wonderful, um, always, always said like, you know, best video needs to be shown first. You get that that A plus video, that great video. Mm-hmm. You need to get that on first. So we're always thinking, like, yo, what's our best video? What's the video that's gonna hook you? And in 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 those stories that hook you. And you wind up finding those stories really on a day-to-day basis here. Um, because there's always something interesting, there's always something interesting going on. Um <laughs> yeah, man. It's you know, yeah, that's that's how you wind up kind of processing, you know, where do things need to be, what needs to be in the show, how can we highlight it? And, um, and, and, and then what can we just either toss it aside or what can, what can go on the back burner until we have time for it. Now we we talked a little bit about some of the challenges and, and certainly the obstacles that you've had to face and other people in news production have to face. 
Um, but what's something, a, sort of a joy, a thing that you said, you know what, I'm really cool. I'm really glad I've been a, associated with that part and really thought, you know, I, I, it's something I, I would tell other people that, you know, I got to be involved in. We, we did this. Uh, any of the sports shows I was able to do in Vegas, um, you know, because Vegas at the time that I got there. It was just the Golden Knights and the Aces. The Golden Knights were babies. The Aces yeah. were babies too, to be to be honest with you. By the way, like never thought hockey would go over in Vegas, and they probably love the Golden Knights more than they love the Raiders. But the Raiders are just global, right? Um, you know, but but I'm there, and it's the year before the Raiders get there, and so like it's still growing. You know, they didn't have the, the AHL team. Now they got the AHL team and they're still growing. And so, like, you know, to be able to have an opportunity to kind of have a hand in that and in, in, in producing the first, you know, big Raiders shows while they're playing in Vegas, which also was very hard because that first year we had no fans. We had that beautiful new stadium. And it was like, hey, we're doing live shots inside the stadium. It's empty as ever. But. You know, what can you do? Global well, it's pandemic. not. Yeah. And it, it shows you the difference between Vegas and, and Philly. I mean, you know, people that are, have for years, that's part of the culture. You know, it's mm -hmm. just part of their their every that what they care about. Mm hmm. It's so, 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 so interesting, but, you know, though, to, to, to be part of those, those shows and, you know, we, we didn't have a sports director in, 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 in Vegas, like we do here in Philly. So, or sorry, we got sports director, sorry, sports producer, you know, we don't have sports producers in Vegas, like we do here now in Philly. So, you know, Hey, do you want to X, Y, Z? What? Great. You know, and you know, to be able to have a hand in that, and those are some some premium games that we would have of, of of the Raiders, and and we were the Golden Knights, you know, NBC station because they had the they had NHL rights at the time. So you know, having a part of those were just, they were so much fun, and you know, to still be able to 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 work that sports side into the news like that 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 was fun for me, and and you know. Also, keeping in mind that, like, hey, you can do news, but you can also produce a, he a heck of a sports show. Um, you know, you can really do whatever, whatever you put your mind to it. And never forget that. Um, so that's that's definitely something in a newsroom um, that I've taken great pride in. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the breaking, you know, there's been a lot of moments where. You know, your show's ripped up. I believe we were the first on the air. Um, it was Roy, when Roy Horn passed. Because Roy Horn passed very early in the pandemic. I think we were the, the first people with that. We were anticipating it, but we were the first on with it. And, you know, it's, it's Las Vegas. Siegfried and Roy are Las Vegas. So you're ripping up the entire show pretty much to you know, run, run archival footage and, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, and, and, and you have amazing anchors who have been in the city for, for, for decades that can just, you know, elaborate what this means. And, you know, when it, when it came to breaking stories like that, and then you check the numbers the next day and, and you see how amazingly well you did, it's, it's, it's very rewarding. It's, 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 it's very rewarding. So I would, I would say those, you know, the sports shows, and then also, you know, having an opportunity to, to, to break in with, actually, I think, you know, I, <laughs> I was paying attention to the NBA when the NBA shut down, that was during my show. And, you know, I, I, I'll never forget. It's, you know, I spent two years and it's like, oh, it's all replaying in my head. But yeah, I'll never forget. It was during my show when, you know, Mark Cuban's looking at his phone yeah. and, 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 and it shuts down. And, you know, I broke in with that. I want to say the very next breaking was like Tom Cruise and, and, and his wife had not Tom Cruise. Sorry, Tom Hanks and his wife had COVID, had COVID. And, you know, it all kind of came from there. But like, you know, I was there telling telling people like, hey, this is this is serious this yeah. is very very serious you know th those are the things that like uh, i'll always remember yeah those are the kind of things your kids are going to want to hear stories about mm -hmm. you know or you know grandkids <laughs> or some some distant relative is going to say Daddy, what, what was, was life like like like, co like before covid it was yeah. wonderful 
<laughs> so Pierce, we always like to end our discussions with uh, a question about kind of, what kind of recommendations do you have for a student uh, that's in, interested in, in the same kind of subjects you are? Get in, uh, you mean it, at Western or just yeah, period? at Western, yeah. At Western, get involved. You know, um, you're only there for, for a certain amount of time. In, in, enjoy college. Enjoy all of the wonderful things that college can bring you. But, you know, make sure that you get involved on campus, whether that is, you know, Greek life. I didn't go Greek, you know, but like, hey, you wind up meeting a great amount of people and, and developing connections that way. So get involved with Greek. Get involved with your student organizations. Don't be afraid to, 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 to you know, jump in and go do some things. You know, get involved with the dog. Especially if you if you feel like you have a voice for radio and you don't just don't you don't like to shut up, go get on the dog. They won't let you shut up. Uh, you know, do TV, do do news, do sports. Like this is the thing about Western. Like you don't get to do things this early, uh, and other, especially other states in 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 in, in uh, the other schools in the state of Illinois. You don't get to do these things early. You gotta wait. You know, I knew people at at, at Mizzou that were you know, learning things junior year that we were taught our freshman year. So, you know, you're not given any really any, any excuses to not do anything um, or to not get involved. It's just up to you to, 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 to want it and go and do it. And like, you know, there's going to be some anxiety involved. You might feel like, you know, you can't, you can, you 100% can, you can do anything that you set your mind to, especially at Western, especially when they, you know, when, when you get in the tools, you know, directly in your hand, you know, take, take, take advantage of it, but then also make sure that you, you take advantage of, 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 of your health physically and mentally, you know, um, the mental health, the mental health I've harped on already. Like it's, 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 it's so important, especially when you're in college and especially, you know, at that, you know, very crucial part in life where you're figuring out what you want to do. Um, it's going to go a long way into preserving your sanity and in and, 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 and making sure that you get where you need to be. Um, and then, you know, physically take care of yourself as well. Definitely take care of yourself. It's going to go, you have a gym, use, use a dang gym. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, and then, yeah, man, like, like I said, you know, if you feel like you can't do anything in that department, you absolutely 100% can. If you feel like that, you know, you're not good enough, to 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 be the voice of leatherneck football go do baseball go do softball go 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 try to you know jump in and do some style eye reporting or basketball work on your skills work directly with 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 the sports guys there is sean still there no sean sean moved on quentin parker okay. is there yeah okay okay yeah. yeah no you know keep keep getting involved man keep keep working and keep working on your craft because there's going to come a time where if you're driven enough, people will, re people will recognize it. People will remember that. Um, and you'll have your opportunities. Just, you know, trust yourself, believe in yourself, be patient, and, and, and you will go farther. Well, it's been great catching up with you. It's such an, uh, I think, an inspirational st story for our students, and, and I appreciate that you shared it. Thank you, Buzz. It's good to catch up with you. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're well. And uh, yeah, man, I hope everybody, anybody listens to this. Um, definitely follow the Barber's Chair on Twitter uh, at Barber's Chair Net. Um, you know, like I said, we, we, we we're right now we're in the Clippers, uh, you know, covering the Clippers. Looks like they might make the playoffs or if not the playoffs outright, at least the play in games. Um, so we'll be there for that. Um, trying to angle some baseball stuff. I really want to really want to try to try to try to get in some press boxes for baseball. Like that's my, that's my sport. That's my love. Um, this completely boring sport, but, um, it, it is, <laughs> I it love is. It too, though. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you, you love, we love the boringness. It is what it yeah. is. So yeah, no, we got a lot of good things happening. Um, also, if you're a wrestling fan, there's going to be a lot of WrestleMania content coming to you. So when I'm in Dallas, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, man, just, uh, you know, the, tap in with the Barber's share. Appreciate all the support. And um, yeah, man, go let the next. 
And thanks to all of our weekly viewers out there. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast or want to recommend someone, just send me an email. We want to hear from you and we want you to continue to watch and listen to the podcast and really appreciate everyone's support. So until next week, stay safe, take care, and God bless.